Hey, this is Kim Clayman from studyoptions.com. Welcome to the presentation. I'm going to talk today about uh, gamma. So what is gamma? Gamma is one of options Greeks that measures the rate of change for delta with respect to the underlying asset price. The gamma of an option is expressed as percentage as re and reflects the change in the delta in response to one point movement of underlying stock price. Like the delta, the gamma is constantly changing, even with tiny movements of underlying stock price. It generally is at its peak value when the stock price is near the strike of the option and decreases as the option goes deeper in or out of the money. Options that are very deep into in or out of the money have gamma values close to zero. Effect of volatility and time to expiration on gamma. Gamma is important because it shows us how fast our position delta will change as the market price of underlying asset changes. When volatility is low, the gamma of at the money options is high, while the gamma for deep in or out of the money options approaches zero. The reason is that when volatility is low, the time value of such options are low, but it goes up dramatically as the underlying stock price approaches the strike price. When volatility is high, gamma tends to be stable across all strike prices. This is due to the fact that when volatility is high, the time value of deep in or out of the money options are already quite substantial. And the increase in the time value of those options as they go near the money will be less dramatic and hence the low and stable gamma. As the time to expression draws near, the gamma of at the money options increases while the gamma of in the money and out of the money options decreases. How to put gamma to work for you? So in simple terms, the gamma is the option sensitivity to changes in the underlying price. In other words, the higher the gamma, the more sensitive the option's price is to the changes in the underlying price. When you buy options, the trade has a positive gamma and the gamma is your friend. When you sell options, the trade has a negative gamma and the gamma is your enemy. The closer we are to expression, the higher is the gamma. When you buy options and expect a significant and quick move, you should go with closer expiration. The options with closer expiration will gain, will gain more if underlying moves. Of course, there is a trade-off, and the trade-off is that if underlying doesn't move, the negative theta will start to kick off much faster. When you sell options, you have negative theta, that will increase significantly as the options approaches expiration. This is the biggest risk of selling weekly options. Now, speaking of weekly options, should you trade weekly options? Going with close expiration will give you higher positive theta per day, but also higher negative gamma. That means that a sharp move of underlying will cause much higher loss and we will see it uh, at uh, some examples. So if the underlying doesn't move, then theta will kick off and you will just earn money with every passing day. But if it does move, the loss will become very large very quickly. Another disadvantage of close expiration is that in order to get decent credit, you will have to choose strikes much closer to the underlying. As we know, there are no free lunches in the stock market. Everything comes with a price. When the markets don't move, trading close expiration might seem like a genius move. The markets will look like an ATM machine for a few weeks or even months. But when a big move comes, it will wipe out months of gains. If the markets gap, there is nothing you can do to prevent a large loss. So does it mean you should not trade weekly options? Not at all. They can still bring nice gains and diversification to your options portfolio. 
but you should treat them as speculative trades and allocate the funds accordingly. Many options gurus describe loss weekly trades as conservative strategy. Nothing can be far from the truth. Let's take a look at example. Let's say you have a call with delta of uh, 0 0.60. If the price of underlying security rises by $1, then the price of the call would therefore rise by 60 cents. If the gamma value was 0 0.10, then the delta would increase to 0 0.70. This means that another dollar raise rise in the price of underlying security would result in the price of option increasing by 70 cents. And the delta would also increase again in accordance with the gamma. This highlights how money, moneyness affects the delta value of the options contract. Because when the contract gets deeper into the money, each price movement of underlying security has a bigger effect on the price. The gamma is also affected by moneyness and it decreases as an in the money contract moves further into the money. This means that as a contract get, gets deeper into the money, the delta continues to increase, but at a slower rate. The gamma of an out of the money contract would also decrease as it moves further out of the money. So gamma is typically as at its highest for options that are at the money, or very near the money. So a list of Vega positive strategies include long call, long put, long straddle, long strangle, long calendar, and vertical debit spread. As uh, you can see, those are all uh, buying strategies. We are buying uh, some uh, options or combination of uh, options. And list of uh, Vega negative strategies include short call, short put, short straddle, short strangle, vertical credit spread, iron condor, and butterfly. And this is again negative strategies, uh, all selling strategies. We are selling uh, calls or puts or some kind of uh, spreads. Summary. Gamma measures the rate of change for delta with respect to the underlying asset price. All long options have positive gamma and all short options have negative gamma. The gamma of a position tells us how much a dollar move in the underlying will change an option's delta. At steady options, we never hold our trades till expiration to avoid increased gamma risk. Okay, let's take a look at uh, some examples. So first example is the uh, iron condor on the uh, rat. And the first trade is a uh, weekly trade. Uh, the trade was put on uh, March 21st, uh, 2014. We threw it at uh, 12.04. So we're going with uh, short options with delta of uh, about uh, 11 for calls and uh, 9 for the puts. We are getting $122 credit and our profit uh, potential is uh, around 14%. And the options expire in uh, seven days. Now the, the negative gamma is uh, minus 0 0.61. Now let's compare it with uh, Iron Condor on the rat, but uh, with a uh, much further expiration, expiration that the uh, options expiring in 56 days. So we're going with the uh, same uh, uh, deltas of uh, options, more or less, uh, 11 for calls and 12 for puts, and our profit potential is around 23%. But take a look at our gamma. Our gamma is only 0 0.07. So comparing two trades, the weekly iron condor 
has a profit potential of 14% in one week. And the monthly iron condor has a profit potential of 23%, but in 56 days. So which one is better? 14% in one week or 23% in 56 days? So uh, the answer is kind of obvious, right? 14%, if you can repeat it every week, you will probably be very rich. The question is, can you repeat it every week? So let's see how those uh, trades developed. Let's go to end of the day. By the end of the day, the first trade is up 4% and the second trade is up 2%. Let's go to next day. Next day is Monday, 5% for monthly trade and minus 2% for weekly trade because we had pretty substantial move. Let's go another day, Tuesday. So by Tuesday, the theta started to kick off and weekly trade was up 2%. Monthly trade was up also around 2%. Now let's go another day, Wednesday. Now on Wednesday, we had pretty big move, almost 2% or two standard devi deviations. So the monthly trade, which had pretty small negative gamma and still has pretty small negative gamma, is down only 1%. Let's take a look what happened to weekly trade. Wow. It's down 45%. So you can see here how big move impacts the trade with a much higher negative gamma and much options expire much closer to expiration. So as you can see, big move will cause a very substantial loss, 45%, while the a further expiration was a fairly resilient even to pretty big move. Actually, we started with RAT at uh, 12.05 and it was move of uh, 50 points down, pretty big move. So with uh, 56 days to expiration, the trade held uh, relatively well, only 1% down but weekly trade was down dramatically, 45%. Now let's take a look on the opposite example, weekly straddle, which is gamma, gamma positive. So if we take, at the, take a look at the weekly straddle using options expiring only in the three days, and we are going with uh, 1180, which is uh, at the money strike. The gamma is uh, 4. And let's compare it to same monthly straddle, but going much further in time. And the gamma is only 1.58. And this is April expiration expiring in 24 days. So let's compare how it performed the next day when we had this big move of almost 2%. So the monthly trade would be up 13%, which is not bad. But let's see how weekly trade performed. Well, as you can see, weekly trade was up 90% which is almost double, basically. And this is the impact of a uh, positive gamma. Again, the impact is uh, exactly the opposite from a uh, uh, positive gamma, uh, from negative gamma, negative gamma, close expiration, big move, you will lose big time. Positive gamma, close expiration, big move, you will win big time. So again, it's always trade-off and you should always take this into consideration when you trade options. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. That's it for today. Have a good day.